beef and orange squash stew. So we start by browning for six portions, about three pounds of meaty chuck, mm. uh, well-trimmed chuck. Uh, and I dredge it in just a little bit of flour, season it liberally, generously, with salt and pepper right before you start to brown it, and brown it in a little olive oil over medium to medium high heat. Then we take that out and you leave the drippings. Mm, See that's all those? the best part. Right, all Crispy that. bits. Right, to that we're gonna add a little slab of butter, a couple tablespoons, and we're going to add in a couple of onions. I have a bundle of sage and rosemary. Also add a little bit of orange flavor with a curl of orange peel. Mm. We're gonna throw in a couple of bay leaves. John's gonna make some crushed garlic. We throw in a very short piece, like about an inch, inch and a half of a, a cinnamon stick. We're gonna throw in a few juniper berries, the crushed garlic, and then the squash. So by the time we remove all of the, the peel and the seeds, you're looking for about the same weight as the beef. So if we had two and a half pounds of beef, we want two and a half pounds of squash. You have three pounds of beef, you want about the same. You can use pumpkin too, right? Of course you can use pumpkins. To pick up the drippings from the bottom of the pot, we're gonna add a little bit of dry white wine or Italian white. If you don't wanna use the wine, that's fine. You can just add your stock a little earlier. And we're gonna just let that cook down just a hair. And we're gonna slide the beef back in. This was the three pounds of chuck. You're a beef slider. So we're going to just kind of nest the beef in there. Now you can slow cook this over very low heat on the stovetop for a few hours. I think it's easier to just throw it in the oven, very low, about three, 325 for a few hours. And it depends on how large or small you cut the chuck cubes. Uh, for me, it's about two hours is a good sweet spot for this. You wanna wait till the meat is nice and tender and we need to add some liquid to the pot. So you have lots of choices here. Chicken broth, fine. Chicken stock, fine. Bone broth, very trendy, very popular. I happen to love bone broth. I'm going to add some beef bone broth. And you want just enough to come up to kind of the top of the, the beef. So now we're gonna just let that come to a bubble and we'll put, pop the lid on. And as soon as it bubbles, I'm gonna pop it into the oven. Over here, honey, can you hand me the raw polenta? There you go. So this is polenta um, that has a, a, an unusual quality to it. It's polenta that's mixed with buckwheat. You can order it online. Any polenta, including quick cooking, is fine. You can make quick cooking polenta in literally three minutes. It will mass for you. Uh, it'll be done, okay? Uh, most polentas, if you're cooking a slow cooking polenta will be 40 to 60 minutes. Some people prefer to cook their polenta in the oven. Uh, I do not, I prefer to cook it on the stovetop. I like to keep my eye on things. Polenta's grits, right, basically? It kind of, yeah. Kind of, sort of, yeah. sort of, kind of. I mean, ground corn, sure. Well, this one has buckwheat too, so. I, you put in a slab of butter at the end, hand me the cheese, sweetheart. Thank you, babe. When it starts to get thick, but still pourable, like this, Okay, thick but still pourable. At the end, towards the end of the cooking process, we stir in a few tablespoons of butter and we add Parmigiano or yeah. Pecorino cheese. You can mix them together, it doesn't matter. That's how we finish this. Now we're just gonna keep that warm. This batch of stew is out of the oven and I just took the lid off and I'm letting it thicken up just a hair. Of course, we pull out the cinnamon stick the aromatics, you know, the little bundle of um, rosemary and sage, your bay leaves, and a little piece of orange. You pull that all out. But it's best if you just serve it right from the giant bubbling pot. Everybody just loves that. And they come a running.